to everybody inside Cyprus. Parakalo. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl grace here i hope you guys are doing fine if you're new here i'm great i create content about south cyprus living here the experience here studying here and every other thing in between you're welcome i hope you find this video is useful today we have yemi on the show yemi is a student of nicosia in fact, when I was about to come here to South Cyprus, he really helped me with physically most of the information I needed. So today, we'll be talking about how to move from Cyprus to other countries. Yemi, you're welcome to the show. Please introduce yourself. Yeah, hello guys. I'm Aki Yemi. And um, yeah, she's rightly said I was a student back inside Cyprus in the University of Nicosia. Um, it was a nice time for me, at least to an extent, although summer was really hot. <laughs> it was like almost 40 degrees. I'm like, wait, I thought Niger was hot, but wait till you face for here, no be smarting. It was really hot, like you was so hot that you want to be moving around in your singlet and boxers. Like, let me just be free. <laughs> yeah, it was really crazy yeah it's just beginning to sun here and everyone is starting to wear their bikinis and what have you so yeah me today let's get on with how students here in the university of nicosia other cyprus based universities or those i intend to move away from cyprus basically as international students to other parts of the world or to the european union in general what do you have to say to them um, so basically to start with i would say one of one of the advantages is that south cyprus on its own is like an european um, country so which means you have some sort of um, linkage with the other european countries around the world but you have to um, note that majority of european countries are also schengen countries which means you have a bit of um, limited ability to move between these countries from cyprus but given that you are an international student in University of Nicosia or other universities around South Cyprus, you are opportune to have some sort of exchange program in which you could, you know, probably like finish your semester in um, a foreign country in another part of Europe, or you could go there on an internship for a full year, which gives you a lot more opportunity to, you know, um, see what you can get out there in other European countries and look at how you can apply yourself, use the skills you've learned to create an opportunity for yourself. Wow, that's great. So, Yemi, you're currently in Norway now. How has Norway, how is it like being, moving from Cyprus as an international student down to Norway, your studies, and now you're currently working there? Yours is quite great, especially you now we've been one of the thriving economies now in Europe. Yeah, so um, to start with, you know, as, as I started earlier on with Cyprus, I'm going to start with the weather out here in Norway. And I must say, boy, it is cold out here. Like when I say cold, I mean it is very cold out here, given we are approaching summer right now we're still averaging between 13 to 17 degrees and you have oh. people out here with bikinis like yes it's hot but come on this is cold for me <laughs> but basically the experience out here has been really nice the schooling system like crazy tough out here and um people out here are really nice um also you have to you know try and get used to the language barrier although majority of people out here speak english but overall the experience out here in norway has been really nice they are like very they're very considerate um set of individuals out here and um you know being able to pick up something to you know pay your bills and keep body mind and soul together is not as difficult as you would have it in certain other parts of the world wow that's cool so like for example we have the erasmus internship we have the erasmus traineeship which for me i know that um, the basic way for students to move around these countries 
I want you to expand on that. What do you think? How can students really maximize this in terms of application, leveraging it? At what point in their stay here as students should they apply? Because um, sometimes we hear that, oh, you have this number of courses left, you can't just go and do this remaining courses there. You have to spend your last semester here in Cyprus. So what would you advise students, international students, to do? Um, so basically, to have a better understanding of this sort of Erasmus programs, there are different kind of Erasmus programs to start with. Um, there are Erasmus programs that you could do, I think they call it study mobility when you are still a student. And there is also one that is attached to some sort of like internship while you're still a student. And then the last yeah. one is called the Erasmus Graduate Internship. That's the Graduate Traineeship Program, which you do immediately after you finish your program for a year in an European organization or company or wherever you are able to secure that. And um, Erasmus basically is like an European um, section that funds your program, maybe funds your traveling, funds your accommodation. They have like set payments for that. But basically as, a, as an international student that is looking to gain experience, you might want to um, go for the graduate internship because that means when you're done with schooling you can go for a year outside um, your home university and your home country to gain the experience and possibly see if you can get more opportunity out there to stay behind and if you are a student you also have the opportunity to go for an internship like that but you have to plan it in such a way that um, maybe you are almost out of courses and um, it could be equivalent for your course or something like that or it could just be you want to do the study mobility and you're planning towards the end of your last semester that way it works out for you but at the same time um, Erasmus program for the students that's the study mobility most times requires that you come back to the to your home university to fully finish the program if you understand what I'm saying and um, so most times it all depends on whichever situations you find yourself and how well you can open yourself up to better opportunities that are out there because definitely if you come if you travel to a different country say, say you go to sweden or you come to norway and you get here after you're done with your program your study mobility or your internship and you get retained definitely that is a good way for you to continue living your life and um, you know integrate into that new system that you have so yeah there are opportunities out there and um, you just have to look really hard to see them and aside from the fact that you could use erasmus we've had people that finished their master's thesis out here and got phd opportunities to other european countries friends that are right now in other european countries you mean from cyprus from uh, Cy universities in cyprus yeah right? finishing their yeah, thesis that's... so if you put a lot of efforts into your thesis and it looks really good during your presentation you could just have um like for instance um if you are like part of different uh, what do you call it like professional organizations so you have uh, professional organizations here and there you make sure you write papers on your thesis and then you present it during that time you could get picked up by a phd lecturer looking for someone to further on that kind of research and hey that is the opportunity you are looking for which is not readily available if you've not put yourself out there um you know in a place like south cyprus definitely might not be one of the best places to be but trust me it is a stepping stone to move forward towards where you want to be later on in the future okay uh, i want us to talk more about like the traineeship let's say for example those students that want to go for the graduate traineeship immediately after their studies here in south cyprus okay like does is it the university that sponsors their visa in terms of now they are done you know when you're done here and um, the university terminates your Mm -hmm. your, your visa so if the students are still here in cyprus and you secure a traineeship in another country you know you can't do it in cyprus and you can't do it in your home country so you have to get to another european country to do that so will the school help with your processing or is it a company that have to secure your processing and everything you need to go for that traineeship from cyprus Okay, so basically let me just give a quick rundown from beginning to end of how the graduate traineeship run, runs, how to, to apply, how to get your uh, visa and what, what else in place. So basically from the beginning you apply for a funding 
you apply to get a funding for your Erasmus graduate traineeship. That's the very first step. And this funding application requires that you have a certain CGP off the top of my head. I'm not exactly sure what it is. 2.5. Yeah. 2.5. Okay, so once you cross that line and you get chosen for that, it is now left to you to find an organization or a research institute or wherever that is willing to take you in for that program for that one year program or six months program depending on whatever you decide to do and then after you get that you are now left to tell the erasmus so erasmus is more or less like an european organization it's it's under europe but it's been funded by europe so it's like a fund available to students from europe and yeah. it's each university has an erasmus section attached to it but it's like a global body that is being funded by europe basically so after you've been able to secure a position um accepted the position to the erasmus about it and everything you are now left with the major part of um, the tax which is going to be your visa at this point in fact while you are making all the applications and all you would have been expressly told that the visa application rests solely on you so you are going to be the one the student is going to be the one or the graduate is going to be the one processing that visa themselves but they would be getting several documentations from erasmus from the university and from your employer or your internship um, organization showing that they are willing to take you erasmus will give you a document that serves like some sort of proof of funds so that way you have all the necessary documents that you need to apply for a visa so basically they've taken away about 60 to 70 percent of the visa documentation troubles which is where most uh, most people have issues when they're trying to apply for visa so once your visa documentations is all set um, you've collected document from Erasmus from your university from the organization that is taking you in you can put it all together and apply for the visa you are going to be applying with your own funds and um, your own efforts fine you might reach out to Erasmus and a couple of other of people are out there for like guidance and whatnot they will offer that to you but they will not go through the process for you you have to do that yourself and then after you've gotten your visa you submit a copy and whatnot to Erasmus and then they will process how your funding and everything will go over to that country that you've gotten your internship in it's 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 a really nice process if you if you are willing to you know <laughs> power through okay so besides um, erasmus traineeship graduate traineeship and um, the internship I, I mean the study mobility is there any other way students from south cyprus can really my international students from south cyprus can really migrate from south cyprus to other parts of um, Europe. Yeah, networking. Networking. Okay. Yeah, networking. So part of networking is going to be you joining professional organizations. Like. So for instance, professional organizations um, depends on what your what you're studying. For instance, for someone that is like a geologist or a geophysicist or a geology engineer, you could join an organization like um, EAG, which is like um, a, a, an European engineer. Yeah, in Cyprus. Thing. Do they have they have, in they have factions, yeah. Uh, okay. you, could, you could join SPE, that's like Society of Petroleum Engineers. Okay. So you have different professional um, organizations for each one of those um, um, courses. courses and majors that you might have decided to, you know, go with so if you join up with those you have to stay active and if possible make sure you are presenting intellectual stuff you have papers maybe your thesis you bring out different topics from your thesis and submit these papers you could work with your supervisors to actually create several talks that you are presenting in those places it shows that oh this is a student that knows his grades and is willing to work for it so definitely while you are doing one or two of those things you are gaining contact because definitely people will, will reach out to you if your topic is interesting enough if you have done your work well 
people will reach out to you to see oh what's up with this oh, we might actually need you we are doing research on this and then you never know where the opportunity will come from or might come from and um, yeah that's just pretty much one side of the networking you, you we have several kind of job fairs out there in South Cyprus that you could attend, you know, to try and keep yourself up to speed about what the market is looking for. Not just not um, necessarily the Cyprus market, but, you know, the market out there is looking for to keep yourself up to date, learn more softwares and whatnot here and there. And basically, one of these ways will definitely click in. And also, one of the things that most people don't know is that... Um, majority of their course um, lecturers and directors are mostly people that have been in the field and a lot of them have connections out there so speaking to them about this kind of things getting close to them creating a good rapport and good relationship with your lecturers to get um, to know where the opportunities are definitely is one of the things that student needs to strive harder to try and do Mm, interesting wow and talking about um career affairs there's one currently coming up um brokers that the university is organizing i believe i'll drop the link so people can also get to use that as a platform to get on these opportunities yeah I mean, thank you so much is there any other thing you'd like to add um yeah so yeah i would just like to see to everybody inside Cyprus, Parakalo. <laughs> Parakalo, that's true. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. It's really great to have you. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was, a, it was completely my pleasure. You're welcome. Yeah. So guys, don't forget to subscribe, like this channel, forward and share this content with those you think. So we'll meet again. Bye.